Hey folks, back in Drone Paradise, just myself this time with the DJI Avata and we are talking about the motion controller. I'm down there by the way. The motion controller in my opinion is absolutely superb. Look at this shot that I got in sports mode, tearing past myself and what about this one? Throw in a little bit of head tracking. Oh, what about that head tracking? Yes, you can get some extra movement of that gimbal and simulate a dive effect as we did here. And let me tell you folks, that was my first ever dive. What about these kind of shots? Look at the way I'm tearing up this road with the motion controller and head tracking. For the 99% of us who are not talented FPV pilots, this setup is amazing. So let's get into it now. Double press the lock button to start the motors. Press and hold to take off. There it goes and it climbs to 1.2 meters, something like that. Pull back, camera goes up, push down, camera goes down. Tilt left, tilt right, and it's as simple as that. We just point in a circle where we want the drone to go, pull the trigger, and off it goes. Oh, -yo. Let's have a little scoot around in normal mode first. There I am. Oh my goodness, folks, look at this location. <laughs> Oh, right, concentrate, Stuart. You've got to focus on things. You've got to focus on that transmission signal, make sure it's nice and strong. You've got to focus, make sure you don't fly too low to things. Now, this is what I love about the motion controller, is the smoothness of not just getting into maneuvers, but getting out of maneuvers. So here I am doing a turn, just pull back a little bit, make sure I don't go too low. I can ease out into a central point. It's very hard to return the stick to center as a drone pilot. I find that anyway, whether you're pinching or, or using your thumbs, this crossing the center is tricky. So I'm just gonna do a bit of practice here. There we go. Okay, let's not get too low. And round we go. How tight a turn can we make in normal mode? Pretty tight. Oh my goodness, pretty tight. Let's give myself a little bit more room and then see if I can do a really nice rotation into myself here. There we go. Now I want smooth flags, so I want to ease out of that. Yes, this is helping. The ability to transition the direction smoothly is going to make a tremendous difference for cinematic flying. So let's set up a cinematic maneuver. I'll press the mode button to get us into sports mode. There we go. Okay, now we've got a little bit more speed in this thing. For me, the beauty of FPV is an extra layer of motion, you could say, that we can add to our cinematic attempts at aerial filmmaking. So a big part of that is revealing your subject. And in this instance, we're going to fly down quite low, but not too low. And imagine this was a model or a car or something, and you do this nice big sweeping maneuver past them. Whee! There we go. Up a little bit. Wow. Oh, up a little bit. Up, up, up. Just pull back on that joystick. Here's another review. I want to ease out of this quite gently. Up a little bit and round we go. I've got an ND16 on this today. We're shooting at 50 frames per second with one one hundredth of a second shutter speed, which is kind of fast for real time footage. But if we get close to things, you do enjoy the benefit of that motion blur in a situation like this, especially when you're flying closer to the ground like I am now. There we go, rotate round, up a little bit. Wow, this is fun. You see, what this gives us that the normal controller doesn't give us is a coordination of the stick inputs and the gimbal maneuver. So in this instance, if I pull back on the stick like this, I get the notion that the drone is climbing. Now the nose isn't actually pointed up in the air, the gimbal's pointed up in the air. But wow, here we go. This is the closest thing you're going to get to a dive in sports mode. 
and pull up. I'm not taking any risks over water, that's for sure. If you were trying to coordinate the stick inputs with the normal controller and a gimbal movement to try and simulate these climbs like this and these dives like this, it would be extremely hard, which is why you put it into manual mode and you do it all in acro mode and you spend a lot of time in the simulator and become good at this. But for those of us who either don't want to or don't need to or don't have the time, this is incredible. I've got EIS switched on, but I'm not seeing it in the goggles right now, and I'm flying smooth. You would not be able to do any of this as a beginner in manual mode unless you put some time in. Let me tell you, I spent 10 hours in the simulator already trying to build my skills for this project. And it all went out the window. <laughs> The second I put the drone into manual mode. Wow, this is good. I need to be a little bit careful not to crash this drone again. I can't afford to lose this one. If you saw our original review, you'll see that we had a bit of a shaky start with this drone. So I'm taking it easy. But at this speed, you get a really great sense of motion if you fly close enough to things. It's exciting. Wow. I'm not going to get too cocky here. I've learnt my lessons. Now let's do a big turn. And I'm able to ease out of it smoothly. This is what gets me. With regular Mavic flying, it's very easy to get into a maneuver. So let's say a rotation with a gimbal tilt or something like that. It's much harder to ease out of it. Your fingers are locked in position. There's a risk that you just let go of the sticks essentially. Easing out of maneuvers here is extremely, extremely easy. And smooth flight equals cinematic flight. Right, the battery's going to want to do a return to home soon. So we fly up and then... Let's see if we can tilt in. Okay, that didn't quite go to plan. But this dive is kind of cool. Keeping an eye on that ground indicator and we'll do one big flight down this road just to finish up. I keep thinking someone's going to come down this road and drive into the back of me, but it's not. <laughs> it's a derelict waste road that was once a thing. This is an amazing location. Oop, don't get too confident, Stuart. We've been down that road before. That. <laughs> so much fun. Right, I need to land this thing. Let's do that now. Press and hold the lock button, and down she goes. Right, head tracking. Mm, not seen many people talk about that. Let's switch the head tracking on and see what extra maneuverability we can get if we combine the motion controller with the head tracking. Back in the air with head tracking off, it goes without saying that me shaking my head doesn't do anything. So, let's activate head tracking to hold the still with my left hand actually while I activate the head tracking here in the menu. There we go. Whoop, head tracking is now on, wow. Okay, so this is your default position for being. Oh, wow. Very interesting. Let's see how we get on. We're in normal mode. Good, let's keep it that way for now. Let's go this way. Hey, I'm flying sideways. Now I'm not flying sideways. Okay. I'm going straight forward at the moment. I'm gonna keep things nice and high for obvious reasons. Now I'm going to turn my head to the left, not moving the motion controller. Oh, this is cool. I can see how this works. A combination of the head tracking with the motion controller inputs.
and you can get a little bit more sideways flight. I have to say, this is going to take me a bit of getting used to. Wow, that's how you dive in normal mode, folks. A combination of head tracking and motion controller. Let's get this into sports mode. Little tip here, remember to have your finger hovered over the brake button so it's available to you at all times. Okay. You see the little dot? That's where the drone's headed. That's the motion controller's inputs. The crosshairs are my head. Now it looks a little bit scary because when I tilt my head, when I tilt my head down like that, it looks like the drone's going to go down, but it's not. It's just a gimbal move. Let's turn this around again. Oh, you can get some tighter turns doing that. Now let's go up again. Pull that gimbal and motion controller all the way up. And down. Down she goes. Can we do a bit of a reveal of myself there? Careful, up we come, up we come, up we come. That was quality. Oh, I just got a bit dizzy there. That was quality. Right, because I'm not so used to this, I'm keeping a close eye on what the motion controller is doing. That's more important to me, so I don't crash. Trying to do a really tight turn, head and motion controller. Whoa, wow. Okay, I'm just gonna take a little second there. That disorientated me. So I'm just gonna gather my thoughts. <laughs> I'm gonna take a second, let's switch this head tracking off. I'll hold the controller here so it doesn't waggle about too much. Swipe down, head tracking off. Okay, we're back on track there. That has so much potential. I'm going to land this just now while there's some power. Take a little break. I'm not the most seasoned FPV pilot in the world, as you probably know by now. I thought that was absolutely fantastic. I'd be interested to see if you agree. There's a couple of caveats that I want to get out the way. If you are really, really good at manual flight acro mode, you have your own custom builds, you've been doing it for a while, all that kind of stuff, this isn't going to replace that. However, for the other 99.9% .9 of us who have an interest in this hobby, we maybe have camera drones but aren't really going to bother with FPV, this gets us to a place that we quite frankly would never get to otherwise. So it opens doors and that's great, but that means it's a beginner's product. Well, I don't think it does mean that in the slightest. You saw there that with very little experience, I was getting semblances of dives there. I was able to slide this thing around, rotate it, get some tight turns. More practice is required, of course, but a few hours maybe compared with, I don't know, thousands of hours to, to get good at some of that crazy FPV stuff you see on the internet. In sports mode, the speed of the Avata is limited to 30 miles an hour, so that's half of the drone's top speed. I wonder if DJI could give us a little bit more speed at some point, or maybe the option of setting a variable speed, so you can go into the settings and set your top speed depending on your level of confidence and expertise. Obviously, the goal from DJI's perspective is so people don't crash their drones all the time, but as I say, I don't think this is for beginners. I think this is for 99% of us that aren't going to max out the full capability of these drones ever in manual mode. You can get some great results. Anyway, I've had so much fun. I'm going to crack on, make the most of the day, and I'll see you next time.